Welcome back, everyone. This is the second Design Doctor. This time I'm looking also, again, at the Dungeon Dudes Seb Sebastian Crow's Guide to Draconine book. This time we're looking at the Smuggler Rogue. And let's just jump right in. I, I don't want to look at the flavor too much, uh, because there's not too many examples in, in fiction I could come up with, but I wanted to jump right into the design itself. Feel free to read this over and think to yourself, where does this design maybe fall short? Where can we give it a little more to make it really sing? And... Spoiler alert, this design that we're looking at today, it doesn't lack pizzazz, it doesn't lack usability or flavor or fun, it simply lacks power. When we went through the reanimator apothecary subclass, I pointed out a bunch of examples of where it didn't really build a coherent play style, or it could have looked a little better if it had a cooler feature here, and in this case we're not looking at, oh, this isn't a lack of cool, this isn't a, like a confused design, it's just a simply weak design, especially for rogues who, between level 3 and level 9, Level 9 is the latest, by far, that any uh, subclass gets their second feature. Rogues have this huge gap through through the levels where most of D&D is played. So you really want something really good at 3, and then it's going to be really good at 9. That's what you're hoping for. Let's see how they decided to deliver on that. So the first feature we're going to look at is Pack Rat. And when you read it, you have a big collection of junk, and you can reach in and pull out something from the Adventuring Gear section of the Core Rules. Uh, and there's also some, some lines in here where you're not going to get rich off of this or anything like that. They're visibly worthless junk, stuff like that. But once we start comparing it to other features that other subclasses get, it starts to lose its luster. For instance, the Minor Conjuration of the Conjuration Wizard is a second level feature, so it's getting it earlier. And it doesn't have this restriction of price. It doesn't have the restriction that it has to be in the Adventuring Gear section. Performance of Creation, which is by a third-level bard, is similarly giving almost no guidance as to what it is. It just needs to be uh, medium or smaller, which means this thing could be up to, like, eight feet tall. Which And the gold uh, value needs to be 20 times your bard level. That's 60 gold pieces compared to the pack rat. It's starting at 25, and it's just going to be 25 for the rest of the campaign. It's also not restricted to the adventuring items, the adventuring gear items. Let's re let me remind you that the Adventuring Gear items does include interesting things like crowbars and traps and... No, no, that's, uh, that's, that's most of what I'm thinking of. Um, okay, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. But think of the times that you have needed an item in your campaign. How often has that happened? There are some times where I have played a Conjuration Wizard, and there have been times where I have grabbed a crowbar or grabbed a key. Now, of course, you can't get a key with Pack Rat, but, oh, maybe you could get Thieves' Tools. Oh, wait, tools are not in the Adventure Gear section. They're in the Tool section. Um, you can't get weapons. You're not going to get a rapier with this. You're not going to get a short sword with this or a dagger. And you can't get armor. It's not like if, for some reason, you lost all your armor. Uh, maybe you had to run out of your inn that you were staying in in the middle of the night and you were able to grab your pack but not your armor it's not like you could pull out leather armor even though that it would it would be a completely reasonable price and i think a re completely reasonable use of this feature uh so i think in particular with a rogue rogues are as i said a class that is not very powerful they need something very strong at three that's going to carry them through the rest of the game and this uh, in particular when you compare a feature to other features that other classes are getting at the same level the rogue should have the best version of this. I think we see this in the Soul Knife, where they have one of the best telepathy abilities in the game. Good, good. That's what a rogue should have. So I, when I see Pack Rat, I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool, but why the restrictions? We need to do better. That's what I think. Let's also point out that it's only proficiency bonuses, uses, minor conjuration, you can do it a thousand times. It doesn't matter. And also, you can do it as part of as part of an action. Okay, uh, I could kind of see that, but it's not like you can like you can't grab alchemist fire. That's on the adventuring gear of, of this section, but it's gonna bust your price limit. You can't grab. I guess you could grab ball bearings. Oh, as an as um, an attack action, I want to attack with ball bearings. I guess it's it's, but. Ball bearings are used in item? It, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. It, it, you know, it, it would be kind of be cool if you got your weapons taken away from you and it's like, oh, I still have my pack, so I reach in and I pull out a knife, a, a short sword. Cool. But that doesn't work with Pack Rat because it's the adventuring gear section. It doesn't include armor and weapons. And um, 
this is a pretty pretty narrow ability. Will this come up? Yeah, it'll come up sometimes, but mostly at low levels. And by the time you get to higher levels, it's not going to be nearly as important. And it's not even as good as the bard version and the wizard version when those co when those classes themselves are getting so much more. Um, so, but there's some other things that you get at third level. But unlike uh, unfortunately, these are very weak, and those are at third level and. Unfortunately, the, they're going to continue that design trend by looking at 9th level and 13th level. You get abilities that do practically nothing. So this first ability, Tricks of the Trade, gives you proficiency in disguise kit, land vehicles, water vehicles. All, all proficiencies I would consider pretty neat, niche, not, not particularly powerful. You get expertise in making checks to smuggle something. Okay, cool. And I think this is on theme. And then there's, this is how many dozen words on how long it's going to take to modify a vehicle for you to smuggle stuff on it. I think this is going to play such a minor role in the campaign. Uh, does a DM and a player, do they really need this atomized advice as to how much you're going to be able to smuggle? I suppose it could prevent a vindictive DM. Like a, a vindictive DM is like, oh, even though you're a smuggler, I'm not going to let you smuggle that one chest of stuff on this giant boat uh and here you can be like oh but these rules say i can uh so so but i think that's such like a narrow case it's so narrow that why are you dedicating this much page space these many words th this much space on your character sheet to an ability that just is never coming up blend of the crowd you can hide when you're obscured only by two or more creatures that aren't hostile to you they must be within five feet of each other, or at least your side are larger. Now, I'll also point out that the hiding rules in 5e say, say that the DM adjudicates when uh, when it's possible to hide, and a, a lenient DM would have already allowed this ability, which means this ability is is just basically nothing. Um, now, of course, now now you'll be like, oh Ben, they, they don't norm most DMs wouldn't allow that. It's good to have it spelled out here. Okay, fine, but at the same time. How many parties have you been a part of where there are two fellow party members that are side by side that you would like to consistently hide behind? You have three melee people in your party, melee rogue, melee fighter, and melee paladin or, or whatever. Is, is, this, is this pretty consistently happening in, in these parties? And what does the hide action do in these cases? You use a bonus action to get advantage on your next attack. Oh, I guess people can't target you. So... Oh, I guess that's nice. But at the same time, line of sight also immediately ends the hidden condition in 5e. So uh, an enemy could, if you're being obscured, they might just reposition themselves, walk around, and all of a sudden, worthless. Um, so not not hardly anything, this feature. Okay, now you can use it to blend into a crowd, right? So you can have, if you are trying to escape pursuit, and there's a big crowd of people, you could just hide, because it's just not hostile. So if there's a bunch of indifferent creatures, okay, now... I would say in most cases, you could probably just use an alleyway or a doorway, and you could hide just as well. Uh, so I, I don't think this feature is very much of anything. Okay, cool. Third level, not a lot. But maybe at ninth level, we'll get something cool. Let's see what we get. Whenever you move through another creature's uh, space, you are going to get advantage on attack rolls against that creature you move through. Now, there's a special class that lets you use a bonus action to get advantage. And, I mean, that's what this ability is doing, right? Use a bonus action to dash or disengage with your cunning action. And then you get advantage against one creature. There's a class that I'm thinking of that can do this at third level. What am I thinking? Oh, yeah, it's, it's rogues. Oh, yeah, rogues can do this with a, a special ability called um, Steady Aim. You use your bonus action, you get advantage on one creature. But there's another class that can do this at second level, isn't there? Oh yeah, it's rogues. Rogues can use their bonus action to hide. Slip past. It's an alright ability for third level. At ninth level, this is just appallingly bad. Considering that you are getting the same feature that you had six levels ago. Meanwhile, the wizards are getting animate objects, they're getting teleportation circle, they're getting Bigby's hand, and you get to use a bonus action to get advantage one time on your turn. Which is something that you've already had for six levels. Since level three. For most of the campaign. This feature is... And I, I want to go back. It, it is okay for a third level feature. But for ninth level, this is nothing. This is embarrassing. And at thirteenth level, it's even worse. Somehow this feature is even worse. Uh, it's... 
whenever you have disadvantage and hit, you can ignore that disadvantage and still get sneak attack. The Dungeon Dudes have been playing a five-year-long campaign. Five-year-long campaign. And one of the players there is a 15th level rogue. I don't know if there's any super fans out there who have been calculating all the odds, but how many times has he scored a hit while he had disadvantage, and he was like, dang, I could have used sneak attack, but I had disadvantage. How many times has that happened in the whole campaign? Now, of course, not five years. The campaign's been going for five years, but his character's only been around, what, two and a half years? Okay, two and a half years. In the past two and a half years, how many times has this come up? Once? Twice? Never? I think it's somewhere to the tune of once, twice, or never. I've watched every episode of the show, and as far as I can tell, it's about once, twice, or never. And you're getting this at 13th level, when spellcasters are getting Force Cage, Simulacrum, Teleport, Plane Shift. Hey guys! Oh, welcome to 13th level. Let's go to the Plane of Fire! Uh, sounds fun! Let's do it! Uh, Rogue, can you help us out? And he's like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, whenever I have disadvantage, I, I could still get my sneak attack. Neato. Neato. Uh, so, so let, let me, uh, this is also at 13th level. So, let's say you play for, what, 20 more sessions? This happens once, twice in those 20 sessions? Three times? Now, let's say, for some reason, that this happens a lot. This is, this is somehow happening a lot, where you're still hitting, and you had disadvantage, so you couldn't get sneak attack, but thanks to this ability, each, each time, it's like, what, 20 damage? So, in, in effect, like, once per day, or you know, once per three sessions, you're getting 20 damage. Meanwhile, um, fighters get indomitable, where they can re-roll a failed save, or, and, and that's like, and that's like one of the worst features at ninth level. And once, once you compare that, you're like, oh, fighters can re-roll a save every single day, potentially turning that into a success. Compare that to a rogues, you get 20, da you get 20 extra damage that you, you normally would get, but for some reason, you were going to not get it this turn, and so now you are going to get it. You're going to get that, like, once every, I don't know, three sessions, five sessions, ten sessions. Neato. 20 damage. Love it. This is... So, this is... Uh, at, at, finally, at 17th level, you finally get something good, right? And what is it? It's a Ring of Spell story. Uh, it's, read this. It's That's basically what it is. You know, it also works with Spell Scrolls, but it's basically a Ring of Spell story. 17th level. In this five-year-long campaign... One of their characters got a ring of spell storing at fifth level, and that was not that was not a subclass feature. That was just they just got it. They got all their subclass features, and they got a ring of spell storing at fifth level. And the ring of spell storing had wall of force in it. And uh, this rogue, are, are we really to expect that this rogue five years later, five years of campaign later, when they finally get this ability, they're going to be like, awesome, wow, this is such a cool new ability that I haven't had before, even though you've had it for five years. Five years we've been playing this game, and, and you've had this ability, and you're a sorcerer, and you get all your subclass features, and I'm a rogue, and I've been able to pull out a crowbar every now and then, and um, use a bonus action to get advantage. Oh, oh you know, I, you know, all rogues have that. So this is the, this is the subclass that, that just has nothing. Um, so what, what do we do for this? Just throw in more. Um, the ninth level feature, totally fine at third level. So let's pack it all into third level. So the first thing we're going to do, if I was going to rework this, pack rat, we're going to lift all those restrictions about gold costs or being in the adventuring group, uh, you know, adventuring gear section. So if you want to pull out alchemist tools, just, just let the rogue have some alchemist tools. Why not? Why, 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 why not? Um, if we want the rogue to pull out, let, let's, rogue can pull out, I don't know, a five pound bag of flour. Cool. Sounds cool. Uh, rogue can pull out uh, a, a jar full of pickled eggs. Why not? Uh, rogue can pull out a, a sock with a brick in it. Oh, awesome. And also, just throw this in. Um, this is just a little flavor feature that's going to reinforce your playstyle. Um, you can wield your proficient in improvised weapons. They gain the finesse property while you wield them. Great. Now I'm going to pull out a sock with a brick in it, and I'm going to hit people with that, and I'm going to get my sneak attack. This is just like a cool feature that is ultimately a flavor feature, but it's it's building the playstyle, building the character that you want to play. Uh, is, is, is exactly what I want from this feature. And then Slick, we're just going to combine all those lengthy words, and we're just going to cut them all down. So we can still get these proficiencies. Um, when we get Smuggle, we get Expertise, we can Hide. This is the um, hide, Blend into the Crowd. And this is the ninth level feature right here. Um, you have Advantage. So, so at third level, this is fine. And like I said, 
I, I, I did go a little hard on ninth level, but that's because it is at ninth level. At third level, this is cool. At, uh, and using a bonus action to get advantage, this is perfect for a rogue subclass. And it's also going to build a play style. This is a rogue that behaves differently than any other rogues. Uh, you're going to use a bonus action, and instead of not moving, you are going to move. And you're going to walk through an opponent's space. And that's cool. Players are going to like that. It's going to change up the battlefield more. It's just going to be cool. And this this is what I would expect at third level. So now, what do we get at ninth level? Take the 17th level thing and put it at ninth level. It's it's totally fair at this level. Um, getting a Ring of Spell Storing at ninth level is actually an appropriate level to get a rare magic item. This is this is normal and good. And uh, it's just the same feature, just at ninth level. looks good. At 13th level, you could even give something... I, I've buffed this just barely, but you could give something a, a lot more substantial here. And it would still be looking good. And in this case, I said, if you ever have a disadvantage, you can ignore all instances of disadvantage and give yourself advantage on that attack. That's going to protect your sneak attack in the same exact way, and it's actually going to be a reasonable boost. And if you also want to do like a trick shot where you're like, I want to close my eyes, give myself disadvantage, and then use this ability to give myself advantage, fun, cool. Like that's that feels like a smuggler type of thing to do. Um, you know, oftentimes we maybe the smuggler kind of points to Han Solo, but I kind of think of Luke where he turns off the um, the aiming assist and he uses the force, you know, looking looking inside himself. I think that's fun and cool, and, like, that's exactly what this subclass ability uh, should be doing. Even this is still weak, right? It's 13th level rogue, come on. Uh, but, you know, I didn't want to stray too far from the original design when giving this, this critique. And at 17th level, you need something good. So I, I think, I thought something that really fits within the existing design the, the, the thematics of it is, imagine you've been putting stuff in this bag all this time, including all that magic stuff. Hey, maybe all this magic is rubbed off on it. So if you want to just re reach in and grab an uncommon or rare uh, item, just do that once per day. And all of a sudden now this is a real toolbox rogue where you could pull out, oh, Wanda Fireballs. Now, of course, you, you don't want this to, you don't want the party to suddenly be showered in magic items. So the item will crumble to dust in one hour. If it has charges, it starts with half the normal charges. So three charge fireball instead of seven charge fireball. Um, after looking at all the core um, uncommon and rare magic items, this is a totally uh, fair feature, um, and really gives a chance for the rogue to do, this rogue to do something that no other class can do. Maybe you guys are all falling out of a giant, uh, you know, you're flying, you're, you're falling to earth, and uh, you're like, oh, uh, I'm just gonna reach into my bag here, check it out. I got a broom of flying, so I, we're, we're gonna be able to, we're gonna, that, that'll save us. Or oh, you know, I. This, you know, in, in a circumstance like this, we, we could really use a, um, a, 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 a ring of mind shielding where the enemy is, is going after our brains and reading our thoughts. If I got a ring of mind shielding, that would protect us. That would be kind of a silver bullet. And it turns this rogue into uh, more utility, more specialist. All these, all these features are just meant to enhance. I, I haven't taken anything away um, as far as from the earlier design. I've just added more and moved stuff into to places that are gonna where the the abilities are gonna be more relevant. They're gonna be more impactful. They're gonna feel better to play. This is a lot closer to what you want for your, for your rogue subclass design.